Welcome back it's to Plus Politics. The 36 states of the Federation have gone before the Supreme Court to challenge the Presidential Executive Order number 00210 of 2020 signed in May by, the, by President Muhammadu Buhari on the funding of the court. The 36 states will file the suit through their respective attorneys general are seeking an order of the Supreme Court question President Buhari's executive order for being unconstitutional. To discuss this, we have joining us two priests and the Temple of Justice, though one is a retired priest, <laughs> I mean a retired lawyer, Mr. Dele Farutimi. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Good evening. Good and uh, we also have, uh, I don't know whether I can call him a young lawyer, since we have a retired lawyer now, uh, Mr. Akintayo Iwilade. Good evening, sir. Good evening to you. Yeah. Thank you very much for having yeah. me. Let me good let evening, Mr. Farutini. Really I, doubt really. if any, I doubt if any lawyer really retires. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Let, let me start with. Nice uh, to you, brother. Uh, yeah, he, he, choose, he chooses that title, so it's not my fault. But, but let's start with him. Um, what do you make out of this issue? Some have read meanings to him. Some have felt, oh, the pres President Muhammadu Buhari meant well. He wanted the independence of the judiciary at the state because there have been cries of infractions by many state governors. Do you share that uh, thought? Well, I am of the opinion that the road to hell is actually paved with good intentions. Hmm. But no matter how good the intention, what we must always be careful to keep in mind is the fact that when the law gives a power, the same law usually sets the limits of the powers that it has given. There was a long preamble to the executive order itself. But at the end of the day, after all the travel and perambulation, it landed on the president purporting to have acted pursuant to the powers of the presidency vested by Section 5 of the 1999 Constitution. Frankly speaking, what the president has done is a clear breach of the Constitution that he presumes to have acted under. Because what he was doing was that he was prescribing constitutional duties that had already been adequately provided for by the Constitution itself. The Constitution has made it clear, if you look at sections 80, 81, and 84, particularly subsection 4, uh, section 84, where it speaks clearly of how the judiciary at the federal level is to be funded. And it simply means there are only two ways at the end of the day by which you take money from the federation account is either a direct charge or by appropriation. And what the president sought to do is in clear breach of several, several relevant parts of our constitution. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, President Buhari has several things requiring his attention. This is not one of them. Hmm. If he was so desirous of providing independence to the judiciary, he can get his officers to obey the law, obey the rules of God. But this, this is one area where he has, merely, he okay. has acted to authorize his powers, in my opinion. I, I, I must say that that sounds quite uh, quite unusual uh, position, especially for a lot of people who felt, oh, thank God, these folks are going to be controlling their resources. But we'll come back to your uh, or build up comments later on. Let me get your opening comment on this, Mr. Iwiladi. Uh, th thank you very much. I, 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 the, the legality of the executive order itself and uh, the extensive nature of what it provided for, it, that's one thing, you know. And then the question of the constitutional provision, the amended constitutional provision that has granted financial autonomy to uh, the judiciary of states, and to the state's houses of assembly is another. Now, the, the, the president's executive order, the legality of that has been submitted by this uh, court action that you referred to. You know, I mean, the attorneys general of the respective 36 states 
going before the Supreme Court seeking uh, interpretation of, of that. And so it might, uh, one might not be able to uh, make a definitive pronouncement as to the legality or otherwise of that executive order, particularly because that has been submitted for adjudication before the Supreme Court. However, the, uh, what the broad uh, perspective I would wish that would be looking at is that the, the subject matter is really about the independence of the judiciary. It's about strengthening the principles of separation of powers. And more importantly, it's also about deepening the concept of federalism in Nigeria. So it's uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the executive, the, the, the aspect of the constitution that the executive order seeks to uh, direct uh, uh, members of the executive and you know, other arms of uh, government in terms of how to implement it, that part of the constitution, in the, in the, uh, that part of the fourth alteration of the constitution deals with the constitutional provision that says that every amount due to courts in Nigeria should be a first, uh, to courts in states, across states in Nigeria, should be placed on the first line charge just as has been implemented over the years at the federal level. And that's a constitutional provision. Regardless of whatever position the court takes, the Supreme Court takes on the validity or otherwise of the executive order made by the president or the extent of his bindingness on, uh, or, uh, on uh, authorities, both legislative and executive authorities across the states, it does not, it would not in any way take away from the fact that the constitution has already, the amended part of the constitution has already made uh, a, a provision that there has to now be an uh, autonomy, you know, financial autonomy for the judiciary across okay. the states and the houses of assembly across the states. Okay. So broadly speaking, if we are looking at federalism, which, true federalism, which we all know and has been consistently analyzed mm -hmm. by, uh, you know, mm -hmm. several, you know, political experts that, and economic experts that if Nigeria is to proceed forward, if our institutions are to be strengthened, we have to keep uh, at this work towards true okay. and consistent okay. federalism. I, and I think you. that the attempt to you. strengthen... Agitayo, sorry. Sorry, I want to I want to interject here. I, think it's a I want to interject here because of uh, our time. I I know that uh, if I allow you, you're going to f make your full presentation for 20 minutes. But because of time, let's just look at some of the issues that uh, Mr. Farotimi highlighted, and I want to go back to him. And just like um, you advise the president that uh, there are other important issues he should focus on, I also want to ask you, what about the governors? Could they be protecting the judiciary so well? Because it appears <laughs> the governors are really, really interested in this issue. Is it that they are afraid of losing their grip over the judiciary? Or can you help me make sense out of the reason why the governors are not smiling on this issue? See, um, there is always the danger that when one comes down on a side of an argument, if one does not take the time to make clear one's position, one might unwittingly be making a case for people who should be condemned. Hmm. I do not speak in support of the governors. The truth is consistent. It doesn't matter whether you like the recipient of your exertion, hmm. as long as what you have said or you, what you are doing is the truth, you have an obligation to simply say that truth. The thing is that the governors would not want to see the independence of the legislative houses. But if something is the truth, it remains the truth regardless of the beneficiary. Let us get something clear. 
My own argument is that what the president has done is completely hypocritical and he doesn't have the power to do it. It is not that what he has done is not commendable. But like I said earlier, I said the road to hell is paved with good intentions. My colleague spoke about true federalism. I would even go as far as to say that this order actually violates the spirit of federalism. The constitutional provision, as amended, section 121, sub 3, is sufficient if it is enforced to address the issue. But if the president, in pursuit of a laudable effort, then grabs powers that do not belong to him, and we applaud him simply because we like what he is doing with the power grab today, where do we find the moral integrity to question him when he does all the other things that this particular president okay. is given to doing that are extrajudicial? Where did he find the power to do this? That is the point. Now, okay. as far back as as far back as 2014, Olisa Agbakoba had actually sued to get the federal government to begin to comply with the provisions of sections 84. And so sections 80, 81, and 84. And he got a judgment from the same Supreme Court far back since back in 2014. The federal government has never implemented that. The same federal government that has failed to implement the constitutional provision is the one that is busy seeking to get the state in an extra constitutional manner. Okay. To do, it's just a power grab. Okay. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, the law does not give a power that it does not delineate okay. and let me, limit. Let me, let me take this discussion. As imperfect as it is, bad as I might believe it to be, if we are going to play by the rules that it has set, what the president has done is unconstitutional. It doesn't have the power. Okay. Uh, uh, let's take this conversation a bit further. Uh, Mr. Iwilade, uh, I see this same argument. I see this same... Um, conflicting views when we talk about the autonomy of local government too. And where we hear that um, the, gov the, the federal government hasn't been able to take care of whatever is within it, and he also wants to take charge of disbursing funds directly to local government. But a good number of people will say, we are talking about local government autonomy. And by extension now, I'm trying to marry the two issues uh, together. Uh, um, where is the true definition? Because some people will say there's nothing like true federalism. It's either you're practicing federalism or you're not practicing it. But I think your choice of the word true here is to say that there is some kind of um, negation to what federalism is. Can you explain that? Well, uh, true federalism is capable of different definitions, but I think that it will speak more to fidelity to the ideals, you know, around it. That is the grant of, you know, autonomy to the federating units and the autonomous units within a federal system. And to the local government question that you, you mentioned, what you will find is that the, the biggest uh, culprits in the muzzling of the constitutional authority of local government is actually not the federal government. The biggest culprits are the state, the state governments, you know, several state uh, governors, you know, to be precise, because you would find the unconstitutional idea of, you know, governors and state governments imposing caretaker uh, committees on local governments across their states. You find a situation where elections are hardly held, you know, periodically as it should be and as envisaged by law, into. Uh, 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 local government councils across across the, the country, which by implication, dis, you know, dispenses of the capacity and the rights of the people at the local government levels to actually decide, you know, who their leaders are and to decide who should lead them and in what in what manner. And so when we are when we are uh, 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 talking about the autonomy or the uh, the Muslim of the, the powers of local government to do very basic things and to fulfill their constitutional obligations, you, 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 know, you can take, of course, on the uh, federal government 
as to whether it fulfills you know, its own side of the end of the stick, its own side of the bargain. But what you find oftentimes is that even when the uh, sums and allocations meant for local governments you know, are disbursed you know, across the, the states, the question is that do these local governments across Nigeria, are they allowed access or do they even get the full money? Constitution to funds that are meant. Okay. Them, are they allowed to fulfill their constitutional responsibility? Okay. And if you look at the entire structure of several states in Nigeria, you will find that hardly do you even find elected local government uh, authorities in several That's states of, of Nigeria. They, Thank they you. have actually been converted to appendages. Let, okay. Of many states. Mr. Okay. So I, I, hope I hope you won't. I hope you won't get. I hope you won't get angry with, at me. I, I'm always conscious of time, you know. I wish we had yes, more time to that. always throw more light on it. But let me quickly get Mr. Farotimi's view on this because of time. In one minute, what's the, simil what's the similarity here when you talk about the autonomy of the local government vis-a-vis -vis our topic for today when we are looking at um, the, the, the autonomy of the judiciary at state level? Mr. K, so. we have this, there is this peculiarly Nigerian affliction. We use terms. Hmm. One of the terms that have come to find new meaning in Nigeria is the word federalism, federal. is a fraud. There is no federalism in Nigeria. There is nowhere in the world where the federal government creates federating units. Nigeria is the only entity in the entire wide world where the federal government is the creator of federating units. Hmm. The Nigerian federal government, quote and unquote, and I repeat, it is a fraud, hmm. is the one that creates local government, and local governments are the basis for revenue allocation. There are so many lies we have domesticated in mm. Nigeria to the point where we are even incapable of telling ourselves what the truths are any longer. And one of those lies is this one that talks about local governments in Nigeria and its autonomy. It cannot be autonomous. Think about it. Ogatinobu, in the years of the PDP, was busy creating uh, local LCDAs here in Lagos State. Now that the APC is in government, how come those LCDAs have not become local governments? How is Lagos State revenue coming to Lagos State? Let's be clear about something. We've told ourselves way too many lies, and these lies are just okay. not sustainable. That's, that's local very... government autonomy is impossible given our current constitutional constitution. arrangement. Thank you so much. Any attempt by the so-called federal government... Thank you so much. To enforce it is just an attempt to enforce unitarianism. Okay. That's all it is. I know this is a big temptation to Mr. Iwilade. I understand the time is gone, but in 30 seconds, you have something to say about his position. Yeah, 30 well, seconds. well the, 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 the view that the Nigerian constitution needs to be entirely reworked completely, there is absolutely no doubt about that. Okay. But, and then the view that the federal government, it's sort of, uh, you know, the view that the federal government. The idea of the federal government creating federating units is on is on head of. But the way the societies evolve, the way societies evolve differ from place to, to place. So there's there's a way the, the there's a way the federal structure in Nigeria evolved. We really cannot call what we have today as a federal system. Absolutely okay. not. This is more okay. unitary than federal. But the the within the limits of the constitution, let us at least stretch it to as far as practicable while we continue to walk through the process of full okay. amendments and all of, those, okay. all of those things. Thank you so much. I wish there is more room to listen to <laughs> Mr. Daly to explain more because I understand that the way we created our federating unit it's not the way America had theirs. We have states who came together and became United States. But in our own case, we have the head of state creating these what, states that we have. Remember that the way we, the way we even created Nigeria itself it's a fraud. was not by conversation. Nigeria That's was true. itself was an imposition. I, I understand my time is up. Thank you so much. It's an imposition. Thank so you so much. Peculiar. So Thank we you. Have to, we have to work out our exactly. It's tragically peculiar. peculiar. Okay, yes, tragically yes, peculiar. That's yes, another yes, coinage. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. We didn't, even give, we didn't even give ourselves the name we bear. Noted. That, it's that bad. Noted. Thank you, uh, yes. Akitayo Iwiladi, for your insight. And also thank you so much. 
I, I will still call you a retired lawyer. <laughs> it's the daily variety <laughs> before your insight. Thank you for, I, I quite appreciate this. Thank you very it's much. been quite educative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Pleasure. We'll take a breather. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my take, especially on the incessant attacks on the governor of Boronu State. Here is my take. While it is true that all lives and all men are equal, it is also true that this attack is a wake-up call to the reality of the existence of insurgents in and around Boronu State. We must, however, question the frequency of the attack of the chief executive officer of the state. Can we interrogate possible sabotage and subterfuge in his security architecture? Can we possibly ask whether these attacks has something to do with his audacity to develop the mental capacity of his people with massive school infrastructure in his state? Why there is a faint hope of possible answers to these questions, can the authorities make urgent steps not to only protect the governor and the citizens, but to genuinely flush out the insurgents in their hideout, if not on the streets? And that is my take on the issue. Plus politics returns same time tomorrow. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeinde. Saying bye for now.